Today on BRS TV Investigates, it's time to dig into all those fuge lights out there and what do all these spectrum measurements even mean? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, and what the manuals are missing with a focus on putting them to the test and then give away everything we test at the end. That means this week we have like three grand in refugium lighting up for grabs. In previous episodes, we explored exactly how effective a Cato-based refugium is at basically eliminating excess buildup of undesirable nutrients in the tank, but more specifically, how high PAR and PER light sources produce the best results at not only eliminating these unwanted nutrients, but also outcompeting the super high par lights in our display tank and growing the Kato in the sump rather than undesirable algae in the tank itself. Today we're going to share an explanation of why spectrum even matters, how it relates to par, and then look at a bunch of different refugium light sources ranging all the way from a $10 compact fluorescent to a grid of T5s, all the way to a $1,200 horticulture light, and finish up with a few tips on using high power light sources like these. First, looking at spectrum and the PER concept a bit better, I think most people understand that PAR generally represents the strength or intensity of the light, but PAR is short for photosynthetically active radiation, which is basically all of the light in the visual spectrum between around 400 and 700 nanometers, ranging from violet to blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. All of these spectrums are considered when measuring PAR. However, photosynthetic organisms don't use the entire range the same. For instance, the reason that most plants visually look green is because they aren't absorbing that spectrum, and they're reflecting the green spectrum and related energy off the plant surface towards your eye, meanwhile absorbing all the light and energy from the other spectrums like blue and red. This is effectively what PER, photosynthetically usable rather than active radiation, is all about. Rather than looking at the entire visible spectrum, which represents PAR, the PER meter gives you a window into how much of that PAR is actually in the blue to red spectrum ranges usable by a majority of plant life. Now, PER is generally more of a concept than something that you're going to measure precisely with a meter because various photosynthetic organisms require different spectrum peaks. That said, Senai does include a PER measurement for corals with their PAR sensor, but it's designed to give you a general idea, not an exact PER measurement. So there's a lot more variables to PAR and spectrum than we could cover today, and you'd likely need a degree in botany to get the entire picture. And most of the research on this type of thing is also done on plants rather than algae, but they contain the same types of chlorophyll and often in similar ratios. That said, there's more or less two primary types of chlorophyll in most plants, type A and type B. These two types of chlorophyll help the plants turn predominantly blue and red light into energy for metabolic functions. Type A chlorophyll is typically capable of utilizing the most light energy at peaks of around 662 nanometers, which is in the deep red end of the spectrum, as well as around 429, which is in the deep blue or near violet. So light sources which peak around 662 and 429 should provide the most energy related to chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll B is not drastically different. The peaks are in the same red and blue spectrums, but in slightly different areas. Closer to 455, which is a lighter blue, and 642, which is slightly oranger shade of red. In most cases, a well sunlit plant with adequate nutrients will have around three times as much chlorophyll A as B. That ratio can go higher or lower based on the plant itself, lighting, and nutrient conditions. So in general, I'd say when we light our Kato, focusing on the peaks related to chlorophyll A at 429, 662 is probably wise, but ideally a wider spectrum, which also encompasses a range around 455 and 642, where type B receives most of its energy from. I will note that the exact peaks don't seem to be universally agreed upon, and there are some elements that can shift the exact peak of maximum energy absorbance, but most references are within 5 to 10 points of each other. However, one thing that should be apparent is light that's even 10 to 20 nanometers over or under the peak has a very dramatic fall off, so it is going to correspond to the amount of energy the plant can absorb, in this case the efficiency or effectiveness of your refugium. The exact spectrum mix and the importance of the individual spectrum peaks for maximum growth and nutrient uptake for popular refugium algaes like Catomorpha hasn't been agreed upon yet, but we're all certainly working towards exploring that. Okay, so now that we have a reasonable idea of what we're looking for with these lights, let's explore how they all perform. We're going to look at this with a compact fluorescent screw-in bulb, rapid LED fuge bulb, Radeon XR15, ATI Sun Power, and the Kessel H80, H380, and H1200. 
We tested over a 36 square inch area for those of you with ridiculously large fuges, but our focus is going to be on the center two foot by two foot area at a 12 inch mounting height. We also tested at 24 inch mounting height for those of you with those huge fuges. Since Cato normally floats to the surface, we're going to take the measurements in air. Starting with the $129 Kessel H80, which looks sharp and its low profile look might be attractive for some installations, but dollar for dollar is probably the most costly option if you're considering it from a perspective of dollar spent to par produced. That said, looking at the Kessel H80 Spectrum, you can see the light peaks almost dead on the optimal 662 nanometers and just a few points off the 429, which is ideal for chlorophyll A. This also almost dead on the 455 peak and a thick band at 642. There's no question this light was very obviously designed for horticulture and growing plants. This spectrum was on the grow setting which has more blue. Now from a par perspective it's not the brightest light out there but it's also only consuming 13.5 watts. At a mounting height of 12 inches we're seeing an average par of about 26 with a peak of 80 in the center. Now it's probably not the fairest test because this light is certainly not designed to cover a two foot area from a 12 inch mounting height. I think it's likely better used for something like a hang on or smaller fuge. However, for uniformity between all the lights we tested, we did raise it up to the 24 inch mounting height as well. The 24 inch average is now 11 par. Again, I don't think anyone would use this light this way. Moving on to the 100 watt equivalent 6500K compact fluorescent bulb with a low cost clamp on reflector. This was only 20 bucks and easily the lowest cost solution and something a lot of us have used for many years. Starting with spectrum, you can immediately see the giant green spectrum peak because this light is designed to illuminate your home and not grow plants. In relation to chlorophyll A, there's a solid peak around 429, but nothing even close to 662. Looking at chlorophyll B spectrum, less than ideal spectrum at 455 nanometers and almost nothing at 642. It's not that this light can't provide any usable light for plants to grow because it can, but there's a lot of energy going into very limited value spectrum. Looking at the two foot par grid at a 12 inch mounting height, the par levels and distribution are actually pretty close to the Kessel H80 with a 25 point average of 24 par. Same when we raised it to a mounting height of 24 inches with an average par of about 13. The 100 watt equivalent bulb actually consumes 23 watts, so approaching double the power consumption as a Kessel H80, but almost the same PAR output. Now, if we're only going to look at PAR numbers alone, that might give an impression of fairly low value in comparison, because saving a few watts in power and a sleeker look just isn't worth the extra 100 bucks. However, when you look at the two spectrums side by side, while they provide equal amounts of PAR, the actual spectrum from the H80 is hitting the exact peaks for maximum energy absorption, and as a result, the plant is likely absorbing many multiples of the energy for a light that's designed to illuminate a household room, and much more effective for a refugium application. You could, of course, buy a whole slew of these full spectrum compact fluorescent bulbs and eventually catch up, and likely for less, but most of us probably don't want a grid of cords and bulbs over the fuge. Moving on and looking at an option commonly used for refugiums, but really designed to illuminate freshwater tanks, which often do have a lot of underwater plants, with the Rapid LED PAR38 Freshwater LED. Looking at spectrum again, this light has a tremendous amount of green and other less valuable spectrum to plant growth, but keep in mind this light is designed to illuminate a display tank. Green and yellow give a tank that nice, natural, warm, white appearance most freshwater tank owners want. From a refugium perspective, there's quite a bit of blue spectrum, but not really optimized around either 429 or 455, and contains very little of the 642 or 662 red spectrum. Again, I'm sure there's enough energy here to grow plants to some degree, but I would say the spectrum is more designed for a display refugium where you actually want to visually see it under white light, like maybe a mangrove installation. From a PAR perspective, this is the highest PAR light so far, and the 13 watts gives us an average of 31 PAR at a mounting height of 12 inches. However, you will note the huge hot spot in the center with almost 300 PAR falling off into the 30 to 90 range in the next ring, and then less than 10 in the outer ring. The bulb absolutely focuses the light downward and not out. Raising the light up to 24 inches results in a much more even distribution of light, but the PAR levels are fairly low, and now inside the two foot grid, mostly in the teens to 30s to 40s. All in all, the lamp is 80 bucks, so it isn't super cheap, but I would certainly consider it on a small display refugium where I want the plants to look green to the eye. Moving on to the H380, which is Kessel's larger horticulture light and would ultimately perform the best in all of our refugium lighting experiments. This is a $300, 91 watt LED, and is going to be much brighter than anything else that we've tested so far, but looking at spectrum first, we're going to see similar results. 
a light optimized for horticulture and plant growth. On the grow setting, we're seeing very significant peaks, which are all right on or just a few points off the 429, 455, 642, and 662 optimal peaks for chlorophyll A and B maximum energy absorbance. However, in comparison to the H80, all the peaks are a bit more balanced in relation to each other. Again, looking at this, I think we can see why this light performs so well in all of our Catomorpha refugium tests. Taking a peek at par, even with the domed lens, these small compact lights have a pretty significant hot spot at a mounting height of 12 inches. You can see we're looking at 1400 par in the center with two to four hundreds around it. There's a two foot average of 169, which is way higher than anything else that we've shared so far today. Moving up to a mounting height of 24 inches, it spreads out nicely and ranges mostly from 100 to into the 300s with a two foot average of 149. We're even seeing some reasonable numbers in the outer 36 inch ring now. Overall, for a refugium designed to produce growth where you don't mind the purple light, this is the option I personally recommend to most reefers. You're going to get awesome results and get the right option the first time. However, some of you are looking for the same type of high power awesome results, but also want a viewable display refugium that doesn't glow purple all the time. So let's look at the Freshwater XR15 Radeon from Ecotech. Look at the spectrum, I think we can all agree it doesn't get much more balanced or fuller than this. At 350 bucks, more or less, it's not the most cost or energy efficient option because the spectrum isn't optimized the same way, but I'm sure you can slide the bars until you find something that visually looks good on a display fuge and produces solid growth or nutrient reduction. That said, it would be awesome if Ecotech provided a little bit more guidance on how to use this light for refugiums, maybe something similar to their coral labs. The overall wattage is about the same as a Kessel H380 at 92 watts. Not surprisingly, the two foot average par is pretty close and only 22 points lower at 156. However, that's likely because at the 12 inch mounting height, the Radeon's lens system is dispersing the light much more evenly. On a whole, it's brighter in the center, but I wouldn't call it a significant hotspot. As you can imagine, moving the light up to 24 inches above the sensors, the two foot average drops to 93. We're seeing an ultra wide dispersion of the PAR spread out pretty evenly over a very large three foot area. Again, a lot of that PAR is for visual appeal only, so it likely won't be as efficient for plant growth as something designed for that purpose, but visually the fuge can look natural white or a warm white rather than purple. Similar to this, we also tested a 100 watt 24 inch ATI T5 fixture with Giesman Super Floor bulbs. We didn't use horticulture bulbs because we didn't have any on hand, but these bulbs are similar to other freshwater lamps we tested today. Looking at spectrum, we're seeing a wide array of spectrum with a major 429 peak, but minimal 455 and very limited 642 or 662. Overall, not the best refugium bulb out there, but likely a good freshwater bulb or even display refugium lamp. Most of the T5 bulbs out there have spectrum charts available, so after today's episode and understanding the concepts, it should be easy to identify the best option for your use. Looking at a 12 inch mounting height, we have a two foot average par of 118, which is slightly less than the 90 or so watt LED options. But as you might expect, the distribution of that light is wider with almost no hot spots. Same type of performance at a mounting height of 24 inches, really wide, ultra even performance. However, I'd note that this is so far the most expensive option of the bunch at $466 with these bulbs. These T5 fuge options are likely solid options for fuges over two feet by two feet, but I think I'd personally sacrifice some performance and go with the Sunblaze T5 fixture, which is only 125 bucks and comes with four 6500K bulbs in the box. It's not as nice as ATIs, and the bulbs aren't perfect for the application, but it's almost a fourth of the price. Lastly, looking at the Big Daddy Kessel H1200. The H1200 has four dense matrix arrays and pretty insane for this application. At this point, I don't think anyone will be surprised. The spectrum mix matching expectations for proper plant growth and like the 380, in balance. However, slightly different is the H1200 has a wider red spectrum band and near infrared spectrum as well. Looking at PAR, we're looking into the heart of the sun with PAR levels of 3,400 in the center and an average two foot PAR of approaching 600 at 588. Really pretty ridiculous. No one would ever mount this light within 12 inches of their fuge and turn it to max because that would be insane. Even raising the light to 24 inches, the center PAR is approaching 2,000 and a two foot average of 567. Overall, I couldn't help myself and put one of these on the BRS-160, but it's tuned down to the lowest possible setting. I think the best application for a light like this might be a three or four foot fuge with it mounted three to four feet above the tank. 
So moving on to a few tips on using these refugium lamps successfully, most of these lights are much more powerful than your average compact fluorescent that you might already be using. And if you just throw one of these on max, you can expect two things to happen. One, the Kato might bleach, and two, you might grow some other undesirable algae. As concerned to bleaching, the first thing you'll note is many of these lamps have almost no green in them, so the Kato will never look green. It might even look bleach white while the light is on, but once you shine a full spectrum light on the Kato, it will look green again. Remember, if there's no green light in the spectrum, it's impossible for the Kato to appear green to the eye. Second, these lamps are bright, so mount them high at first and work them down over several weeks. The Kato will absolutely acclimate and utilize the higher par and better spectrum if you don't blast it immediately. As it relates to other undesirable algae growth like hair algae in the fuge or on the Kato itself, this is almost always because the nutrients in the tank were already sky high and there's more than enough nutrients and energy for every algae to take off. You're way better off doing a series of large water changes to get the nutrients down first and then use the new high power fuge to keep them down. To be honest, I think this advice applies to almost any new nutrient reduction system. Use water changes to get it down and then implement the new system. If you do have some hair algae growth anyway, simply remove it by hand for a couple of weeks and it'll likely go away. If it grows in the Kato itself, simply flip it over and let the hair algae die in the bottom. The Kato will uptake the nutrients. Lastly, everyone asks if the ball of Kato should rotate. The short answer is yes. If you can expose all sides of light, it will grow better. But I'll say almost no one does that long term because it almost always gets caught on something and stops rotating at some point. I don't rotate ours and it's thick and green all the way to the bottom. Just not a huge concern of mine. I also light the fuge 12 hours on, 12 hours off with the reverse light cycle with the light on at night to elevate and stabilize the pH. I personally tried 24 hours with no results. The moment that we went back to 12 hours, the fuge took off. So this is the best part of the show where we give away everything we tested today for free. Again, this is like three grand in lighting, so click that link that just showed up or head on over to the Bulk Reef site, click on specials and deals and free stuff to sign up. I think the entire community also wants to know how you light your fuge, how big, what light, the schedule, and your results. So head on over to our Reef to Reef thread with the link below. And if you like this kind of reefing material, let us know with a quick thumbs up and subscribe because we release new reefing videos all week long. See you next Friday with another episode of BRS TV Investigates.